before we get into today's video, I just want to mention that it is a little bit all over the place. It's just a bunch of odd jobs from the last week or so. I haven't been filming a lot. We haven't been doing much more than just the daily chores lately. And that's nice before the holidays take a little bit easier. But I did want to say for everybody to have a very Merry Christmas. And if you're celebrating any other holidays, have a good one. And for everybody just to stay safe and um, enjoy today's video. in our silage pits here. These starch pellets are just um, basically a starch replacement for barley grain in our TMR currently. We have them in a bin way over there on the other side of the yard. Now we're just dumping them into our silage pit on the concrete here just because we don't have enough feed bins to just put this stuff in just like the rest of the feed bins. Um, they're all full. They all have ingredients in there and we can't mix this up or anything so we're just dumping it in our silage pit. We're scooping it up with the wheel loader when we're feeding it. And we just measure it out like any other grain with the scale on the feed wagon. So it doesn't really impact things too much. The only difference is uh, I just got to dump this load in the silage pits here. So I'm going to open that back gate there. I think I'm gonna drive it a little bit forward. That's a pretty good pile right there. I'm gonna have to drive even more forward just to uh, shovel it out. <clears throat> if it's spread all over the place, we can always use the payloader and kind of push it up on a neater pile. So it doesn't really matter if I spread it out too much. The concrete is really clean right here, so that'll be fine. Um, so there's uh, just probably like a quarter load left in that bin that I was taking this stuff out of. We're gonna go grab the rest of it, dump it in here, and then we got another empty bin. So it's probably only gonna be like a quarter of a load. Guys, this these starch pellets are incredibly dusty, but it's not the same kind of dust as a barley grain or some other nastier dust. This stuff is nice. It doesn't really make you itch at all. It's just a fine, kind of almost like flour. We're gonna go and drop this off at the silage pit. It's only about a quarter load. And then we'll move some other grain around. This is the road in front of our farm. I don't know if you guys can see it on the window there. It's actually raining right now. So yesterday afternoon, it was minus 20. This morning around six o'clock, it hit zero degrees. I don't know if this is kind of like one of those Chinook things, not to get too scientific or anything on you guys, but apparently a bunch of warm air just blows into the province of Alberta. They call it a Chinook. And so it can be minus 20 one day and the next day it can be plus 10, just like that. It gets super windy. Maybe this is a little bit because it was really windy this uh, last night. So probably it just blew in all of this warm air so it is pretty nice to get a little bit of nice warm temperature but it has its drawbacks for sure like icy roads <laughs> well i guess i could throw those right away in the uh, wash machine when i'm done Unreal.
this afternoon, me and dad are just tossing some bedding in the corrals here. Uh, it's pretty warm today, both minus three degrees Celsius. Why do you gotta put bedding in even when it's warm? I thought you guys only did that when it's super cold out. Um, it's important to keep these corrals well bedded even when it's warm out because what's gonna happen today, it's gonna almost get to zero, maybe even go above zero degrees Celsius. And a lot of the animals out here in the corrals are gonna start to sweat, unfortunately. So tonight when the temperature drops down, a couple of them might be a little bit sweaty. They might be a little bit wet. And we all know if we're, we've been sweating and we go outside and it's cold, you get cold a lot quicker than if you were dry. So we got to make sure that these cows have a nice dry place to lay tonight where they can stay warm. And that's why we're tossing bedding in today. I'm in our sand room right now. And this sand room's been getting pretty dirty lately. So I just want to clean it up and kind of clean up the sand pile a little bit. You can see all of the manure over the place on the ground and everything. It's just piling up, getting worse and worse, especially around our box scraper there. And I also want to push up, kind of neaten up this pile. There's some little bit of sand on the wall here. If I push it all up neatly, we could park the buckets and stuff, that bed buster and all those things. We could park it a lot neater on this wall, as well as the skid steer. So I um, just want to tidy things up this morning, make it look a bit better. I'm going to back the skid steers out and give us a little bit of room so we can scrape everything into the group there. I'm just going to push it right into the manure alley over there. And then this afternoon during milking time, whoever's going to scrape that group is going to push it into the slot and it's just going to go into the manure pit. So I'm gonna just open this gate to the group here. Hopefully the ladies are gonna cooperate a little bit and not try to get out on me. We're just gonna have to keep a good eye on it as we're scraping it all in there. looking a lot better all the way up to uh, the group there gonna clean it up here with the shovel a little bit tidy up this sand pile here this sand room as full as possible right in the fall so that you're gonna know you're gonna have enough bedding to get all the way through winter but what that does it kind of gets rid of all the room we have back here to park stuff inside where it's warm and uh, as you get going through the winter you start to get a lot more of that space back because you've put a lot more of the sand bedding in the beds in the freestall barn so that's one thing to definitely look forward to as the winter starts to go along and uh, more sand is out of this sand room Awesome, so that's how we got it all parked back in here. The uh, two bobcats, the bed buster, the sand bucket, then the bigger bucket over there, and the box scrapers behind that skid steer. Floor's all nice and clean, and uh, we got a lot more room if it's all neatly parked away like this, so. It's another thing done today. Earlier in today's video, you guys saw us using this uh, hay buster here to put bedding in the corrals. Unfortunately, it hasn't been working as good as it usually does recently. And that's because we have so much buildup of the net wrap in the beater here for the shredder. So I want to quickly take it out. That's the shredder at the bottom of the chamber there. And also one of the rollers is completely covered in net wrap as well. So I'm going to try and cut that out. This thing has its own way of getting rid of all of that net wrap. I'm just going to turn the tractor off here because the PTO is hooked up to that shredder. I don't want to be in there and it accidentally going on or anything. So. Go. 
So just pulling that bar down to, from one to five there, lifts the grid up on the inside there and allows us to move a bar through, which is gonna let us cut all that net wrap out of the shredder there. So that's the bar and it's got a knife at the front and you can just kind of ram that through this hole right here and it'll splice all of the net wrap off of those uh, beaters there. I just got to get it lined up right now. I noticed, looks like there's a bearing that's blown in here. I don't know what that's about. We don't use this uh, feed shredder attachment on it ever, but for some reason that looks buggered. Nice, so once I got it going through, it just took a little bit to get started, but then it went pretty easily. Just had to ram it a whole bunch. It's still a massive mess, but you can see there is quite a bit cut. So that's good. There's just whatever is too tall kind of for that knife to reach, which isn't a lot. It'll be easy to cut off. Then we're gonna have to free up this entire roller. It is supposed to just look like that, but you can see there's quite a few rolls packed on this roller here. So that's unfortunate. Not supposed to be like that, but uh, I guess once it starts and if you don't do anything about it right away, it's gonna build up pretty big. So. Let's get at it. So now it's all freed up. You can see right down to the metal roller, all spliced up nicely. We're gonna hop out and pull it up by hand. It looks smart to just uh, turn the shredder on right now, shoot all the net wrap out. I've tried it before and believe it or not, it doesn't actually work like that. It just gets re-tangled up in that roller. Look at how much nicer that is. This is pretty brutal. We got this entire center beater cleaned off and most of this roller, just about a foot left, but I gotta go milk cows, so dad's gonna finish it off. It's a pretty sweet deal, hey? <laughs> yep, you bet. <laughs> Look at that, the ladies just fill up the parlor right away. It's awesome, we'll close these back gates. Start hanging them under. again guys have a merry christmas and um, if you enjoyed today's video hit those like and subscribe buttons down below check out the instagram at sask dutch kid and i hope to see you guys in the next video thanks for watching